Hello and welcome back to Rybrook TV and today I want to help you on your journey to going full electric. There's this common misconception that electric cars just aren't as practical and as easy to live with as our internal combustion cars. Take filling up your car for example. With an internal combustion car that fossil juice is just so readily available you can pull up to any petrol station, fill up and be on your way within a matter of minutes. Whereas electric cars they take a couple of hours to charge up in some situations. But that misconception is actually very wrong because you just have to change the way you approach refueling. Come with me on this journey as I untangle those misconceptions and answer some of the questions you might have around charging your car whilst I drive around in this absolutely outlandish BMW i3. Now let's take a look at the three main locations you'll be able to charge your electric vehicle. You'll have at home, you'll have at work, much like I am right now, and you'll also have at public charging points. Now if you're fortunate enough to have a driveway or off-street parking, then at home is probably the most practical and easiest way to keep yourself fully juiced. You see, all electric cars come with a standard three-pin plug and an adapter, which makes charging your car as simple as plugging in your mobile phone. Charging this way, especially overnight, will provide you with plenty of juice to cover the average UK commute. Whilst this method is actually the slowest method and will only provide you with 2.3 kilowatt hours of charge, it's ideal for people that don't use their car every single day and are only using it for very short journeys. If you can't leave your car on charge overnight every single night or you're doing much longer journeys, you have the option to install a home charging point. These provide around 7 kilowatt hours of charge and can get you from a flat battery to fully charged in around seven hours, which is brilliant for people that maybe only want to charge their car once a week. There are a whole range of home charging points available, and many manufacturers offer incentives to get one of theirs installed when you're buying an EV from them. So make sure you research this when you're looking to make the step to electric. It might be more affordable to get one installed than you think. Your next option is to charge your car at your workplace. Now that obviously requires you to be fortunate enough, like we are here at Rybrook, to have charging points at all of our sites. You can simply pull up at one of the stations, plug your car in and walk away. Some of the points might be very similar to those you have installed at home where it's a, a plug and play system. You take the cable from the wall, plug it into the car and it'll do its thing. Others might require the use of an RFID card. Now we'll come onto these in a little bit more detail later on in the video when we talk about public charging stations. But if it does require an RFID card, you simply approach the station with the card provided by work, tap it on the machine and again, it will tell you the car is now charging. Now your third and final option is going to be public charging stations. Now there's some 35,000 of these spread around the UK across roughly 13,000 locations and each and every week it's estimated a new 150 are going in which is brilliant because it makes them very very accessible and you know easy to find because these are the equivalent to a petrol station for you and your electric car. These charge points tend to be located at places like petrol stations and service stations but you can also find them at your local supermarket. The easiest way to locate where your nearest one might be though is in your car's satellite navigation system or alternatively you can download the really handy electric car app called Zap Maps. This is an essential for anyone who owns an electric vehicle because it will help you identify exactly where all those charging stations are, whether there's a car already there using it and charging up meaning you might have to wait and it will tell you exactly how fast that charge is going to be and what apps or RFID cards you might need to activate it. Now, what is an RFID card that I keep wanging on about? I've mentioned it a couple of times now. Well, the RFID card is the card you'll need to activate certain, but not all, charging stations. The best thing to do, again, as I've just mentioned, is download the Zap Maps app and check around your local area and which charging stations you're most likely to use and find out who the providers are and whether you require an RFID card or not. If you do, it's as simple as going to their website, setting up an account, linking it to a payment method, and they'll post you out your RFID card and when you use it, it will charge your account. As I've said though, not all charging points use RFID cards. Some of them are very, very simple and just use an app. Again, just download the app from the App Store, set up an account, link it to a payment method, and when you arrive at your local charge point, just check in using the app 
or scan the QR code on the station. And then, you know, your account will do the rest. Fortunately though, not all charging stations require an app or an RFID card. Some of them, much like this one I've arrived at here, make things much, much, much easier because you just simply have to tap your debit card or any form of contactless payment such as Android Pay or Google Pay and plug your car in and away you go. With that in mind, it's always worth checking the ZapMaps app before making a trip to any public charging point. This is to ensure that you've got the right payment methods and to ensure that the station isn't being used by someone else and it prevents you from being left without any charge when you get there. With the i3 now on charge, let's take this opportunity to discuss the different rates of charge that you might find at the various different public charging stations. To find out what rate of charging you can expect, again, I'm gonna bring your attention back to that Zap Maps app. It is literally the holy bible for any EV car user as it will help you identify what rate of charge you can expect from the charging station you've arrived at. There's three different levels of charging you can expect. The least common out there is actually a slow charger. These will charge your car anywhere between three and six kilowatt hours. And well, they can take a long time to charge your battery. You wouldn't expect it to go from flat to fully charged whilst popping into the gym or to the shops. They're just useful for giving you a little bit of an extra range whilst you go about your day-to-day -day business. The most common you'll find is actually a fast charger. These can provide seven to 22 kilowatt hours of charge and will get you from flat to a full charge in anywhere between three and five hours. Finally, you have these, the DC chargers, the rapid chargers, and they are exactly what they say. Okay, these things can charge your car anywhere between 50 to 350 kilowatt hours at a time. That's enough to get your battery from completely flat to 80% charge in just 30 minutes. While it might be tempting to find and use the DC rapid chargers all the time, it's advisable to only use them when necessary, as prolonged use can actually shorten the life of your car's battery. With the right preparation, you should always have enough battery to complete your journey, or at least be able to find a charging station to get you going again. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch today. I've been Jack, this has been a very gold BMW i3, and between us, we really hope that this has given you enough confidence to make the transition from internal combustion to electric in the future. Don't forget to like and subscribe this video. And if you've got any questions at all about our EV range here at Rybrook, please use the link in the description below to contact us. We'll see you next time.